I'll quickly create a simulation for the binding of a ligand to an enzyme. I go to the model menu and the modules and chemical reactions and I'll try something like eox plus benzoate for example and we'll make a complex out of that and I'll guess uh, 2 times 10 to the 6th reciprocal molar reciprocal seconds for binding and for the reverse reaction I'll guess at 70 per second so that's a, a nice mechanism maybe and uh, we could set the initial concentration of benzoate um, at say 150 micromolar and the initial concentration of enzyme at 150 micromolar and let's let it rip so we've got the in the gray box the equations that define binding already written down are these parameters which uh, define the solution uh, of the differential equation we don't have to tamper with those too much although the reaction is pretty fast so I'm only going to take it out to about 0.2 seconds and I'm going to give it a, a finer grained time step we will simulate millisecond data points but my data that I generated in Webzyme uh, Actually, our absorbance is a function of time, and that's not in my simulation yet. So I have to add that. And we know that Beer's Law says that the absorbance is equal to the extinction of each species times its concentration. So there is the extinction, I'm calling EX1 of EOX plus EX2 times the concentration of the complex. Madonna can calculate the concentration of complex and the concentration of eox as a function of time. Madonna doesn't know what these extinctions are, so we have to tell. Uh, and I'll throw in values which I estimated from the spectral data that is available to you. I've got e values of ex1, I've got values of ex2 put some numbers in here at the wavelength I was working at. Uh, I think these are right. So now I should uh, open up a data file. So if I go up to model, uh, you can go to data sets and import a shot that I simulated, uh, a one-to-one -one concentration mix. And uh, let's see that's right here and we can now run the simulation and we get the trace the window with the traces and Madonna doesn't really know what we're interested in but our experiment is an absorbance uh, experiment and we can see that we've simulated the curve but Madonna has not displayed the experimental data we have to ask for that so if we go up to graph we can choose variables and uh, here's the data that I imported so we put that on the uh, list to view the left Y axis and so they should be comparable so I can't see too much because Madonna auto scaled on my data which was much longer than the simulation I'll put it in log time so that I can see everything and you can see that my simulation and my uh, experimental trace are kind of close, so my uh, estimates were kind of sensible, but they aren't exactly right, and so I should try to improve them by fitting the data, by changing parameters and fitting the data. Now, I think I have the extinctions correct, so I'm going to worry about the values of the rate constants. Maybe I didn't put the right values in. Uh, so this is the parameters window I could change these right here and uh, run new simulations and see how the curves change but I'm gonna let the computer do the work in this situation I'll go to curve fit under the parameters menu and this window pops up and we can tell Madonna 
which parameters of the available parameters that define the mechanism uh, we should fit. So let's change the forward rate constant and then the reverse rate constant. Now when we add it to the parameters to be fit we can see there's a minimum value and a maximum value. Rate constants can never be uh, negative so we'll put a zero at it as a lower limit and if this is really uh, diffusion limited the highest value we can ever get is about 10 to the 9th or 10 to the 10th um, so I'll put it at 10 to the 10th and we have to have two initial guesses when Madonna fits to differential equations uh, it uses a simplex algorithm and you have to kickstart that with two initial guesses. I'll go with these and see what Madonna can do with that. Uh, the second rate constant I want on there is the uh, dissociation rate constant. Again, it can't be negative. And uh, Madonna looked at the values I had in the parameters window, 70, and has bracketed those with these two guesses. And uh, I'll guess at 1,000 as a maximum. I think that's way overestimating, but we want it to uh, have the leeway to explore parameter space at least a little bit. Now we have to tell Madonna which of the variables uh, that are built into the simulation it's going to try to match. And so we have an absorbance trace, so Madonna can calculate this absorbance trace by and change the rate constants and come up with new absorbance traces and compare it to the data set. We only have one data set open, so it's going to try to match these two and uh, that should determine our fit. So let's let her rip. And that was a very quick fit. And look, the, uh, the cal calculated trace is essentially identical to the uh, trace from data. And if we look over here at the parameters, we can see that the initial values, the values I put in for forward and reverse rate constant uh, have now been changed to what are superior values because they yield the experimental data. So that's all there really is to fitting a single curve with Madonna.